Good morning, Purity. Good morning to our Facebook campus, to our conference call, and to those who are present in the sanctuary this morning. Uh, this is Deacon Watson uh, coming to you with your morning Sunday school lesson. Uh, today's lesson is titled The Day of Pentecost, uh, taken from uh, the book of Acts chapter two, uh, verses one through eight, and then verses 14 through 24, and then verses 37 to 39. Uh, so we, we can't go down a long airplane runway this morning because we have so many verses, we're gonna have to kind of take a helicopter, as the pastor would say, and we just have to go right up. Uh, so let me start with a word of prayer. Kind Heavenly Father, first of all, I thank you, my Lord, for just allowing me to wake up this morning, Father, and I'm so thankful that uh, uh, you allow me to stand before the Sunday school class to uh, teach this morning's lesson, talking about the Pentecost and the, the, be, be, the beginning of the organized church, Father. Uh, Father, I ask you just to uh, be with me this morning as, uh, as we go through this lesson, Father. Uh, uh, lead and guide me and, and uh, the things that I should present to the class, Father. Father, I thank you for just being with me as I had to study this long lesson this morning, Father. Uh, uh, and um, I just pray that uh, everything I say and do would edify uh, your church, Father. We ask you to bless those who are uh, in the class this morning, Father. We ask you to bless our pastor, Father, Reverend Dr. Robin A. Tugut II, Father. Uh, and we ask you to bless all who are in attendance this morning and bless those who are unable to be in attendance this morning. All these blessings I ask in the name of your loving son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Uh, so uh, we're talking about the day of Pentecost. Uh, uh, we know that the Jewish calendar's uh, most important observance is that of uh, the Passover. Uh, uh, and it was a time to remember uh, the, 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 the the uh, deliverance from uh, slavery uh, in Egypt. Uh, so we, got, you know, we know that God's angel of death passed over the Israelites' household that, uh, marked, that was marked with the blood of the lamb. Uh, Pentecost occurred uh, 50 days, and that's seven weeks and one day after the Passover. Uh, this was a celebration also known as the Feast of Harvest, uh, uh, the Feast of Weeks, and known, also known as the Day of the First Fruits. And, and Luke, who was the writer of Acts, uh, probably intended this book to be a historical record of the beginning of the organized church. It documents what the first acts of the following of Christ were. Uh, so let me just uh, read some scriptures to you. Uh, 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 Starting at verse one, it says, and when the day of Pentecost was fully come, they were all uh, with one accord in one place. And suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. And there appeared unto them cloven tongues like as of fire, and it sat upon each of them. And they were all filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak with other tongues as the Spirit gave them utterance. Uh, and there were dwellings of Jew Jerusalem Jews, devout men out of every nation under the heaven. Now when this was no noise abroad, the multitude came together and were confounded because that every man heard them speak in his own language. Excuse me. Verse seven, and they were all amazed and marveled saying one to another, behold, are not all these speak Galileans? Uh, and how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Verse 14, uh, but Peter, standing up with the 11, lifted up his voice and said unto them, ye men of Judea and all ye that dwell in Jerusalem, be this known unto you, and hearken to my words. For these are not drunken, as ye suppose, seeing 
it is but the third hour of the day. But this, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Verse 17, uh, uh, where he quotes Joel's, and it shall come to pass in, that, in the last day, said God, I will pour out my spirit upon all flesh, and your sons and daughters shall prophesy, and your young men shall see visions, and your old men shall dream dreams. And on my servants and on my handmaids, I will pour out in those days of my spirit, and they shall prophesy. Uh, verse 19 says, and I will show wonders in heavens above, and signs in the earth beneath, blood and fire and vapor of smoke. Uh, verse 20 says, the sun shall be turned into darkness and the moon into blood before that great and notable day of the Lord come. Uh, verse 21, and it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Verse 22, ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourself also know, uh, him being delivered uh, by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God have raised up, having loosed the pains of death, because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. Now, verse 37, now when they heard this, they were pricked in their heart and said unto Peter and to the rest of the apostles, uh, men and brethren, what shall we do? Verse 38, then Peter said unto them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, 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 focal verse, verse 39. For the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are afar off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. Uh, thus ends the reading of our scriptures for the morning. Now, uh, as my introduction, uh, the Jewish calendar's most important observance was Passover. It was a time to remember the deliverance from, uh, from the, of the Israelites from uh, Egypt, which uh, I mentioned before. Now, uh, uh, as we look at uh, the first eight verses, uh, before the ascension of Jesus, the 11 apostles had been instructed by Jesus to wait in Jerusalem. And we, now, we know there were originally 12 apostles, but we know... <laughs> We don't have to tell you what happened. We, we know that story already. Okay. And, and behold, I send the promise of my Father upon you, but tarry ye in the city of Jerusalem until ye endure, till, till you be endued with power from on high. Uh, uh, Luke, in Luke 24 and 49, uh, it says, this was an indication by, uh, by Jesus that the Holy Spirit, that Jesus promised, it's going to come. Uh, matter of fact, it's going to be there shortly. Uh, uh, now, including the apostles, there were 120 people gathered, and they were with, uh, spread, eventually uh, began to spread the gospel throughout the world. Uh, uh, as we look at verse 1, in the final full day of the uh, Passover to Pentecost season, those who were attended the observance would begin returning home the next day. The 120 Jews gathered together on one accord in communal prayer uh, 10 days after the ascension of Jesus. Uh, they were full of hopeful expectation after being fearful uh, uh, seven weeks earlier uh, after witnessing the crucifixion of Christ. Uh, and that reminded me of how we come together in the posture of prayer. Uh, uh, as we, uh, before COVID, we would all recite the Lord's Prayer uh, just to begin our service. Uh, uh, and then uh, something that still goes on today, we have a weekly uh, telephone prayer line. Uh, and, and 
we all have the feeling of a hope, hopefulness uh, after we come together in prayer. And, and so this, they, they were gathered together uh, at this time in hopefulness. Now we know that they're gonna be uh, uh, subject to persecution later on, but at this point, that they were in a spirit of, of hopefulness. Uh, in verse two, and suddenly there came a sound from heaven as a, a rushing mighty wind, and it filled all the house where they were sitting. Uh, and there appeared unto them cloven tongues like fire, and it sat on each of them. And they were filled with the Holy Ghost and began to speak in other tongues. Uh, and, and right there, it reminded me, I remember when we used to have individuals to come up to pray. And, and I, I vividly remember uh, our newest deacon, uh, Alex Mo, Deacon Alex Moda. And he came up to pray and he prayed in Spanish. I don't understand a word of Spanish, but just looking at him and hearing him, uh, the sounds he make, you know, I, his message was, was very clear to me. Uh, and I imagine that's what these people were experiencing here. They're hearing all these uh, foreign tongues, uh, but yet they understand everybody, okay? Um, now, now that one uh, thing you wanna notice in this verse, is, uh, notice that the sound of a rushing wind filled the house, but there was no wind itself, okay? Uh, uh, the separate tongues of fire was uh, on each disciple, but, uh, and no one was omitted, and no one was injured by that fire. And, and fire normally indicates the presence of God. Uh, we, we know about the burning bush. Uh, uh, it, it, so the fire will represents the presence of God. Now, uh, the purpose of the different tongues was to glorify the power of God, showing that all who heard uh, his word understood, it, even with the different tongues, they all understood what was being said. Uh, Verse 7, and they were all amazed and marveled, saying one to another, Behold, are not all these which speak Galileans? Uh, and, how, <clears throat> and how hear we every man in our own tongue wherein we were born? Note that they were not only, uh, that, that they not only heard them, they understood. Uh, and this could only be made possible by the presence and the power of God and the Holy Spirit. Holy Spirit. Uh, now, uh, the lesson uh, takes, a, takes a turn, and, and Peter, the one that we know denied Jesus three times, the one we know that was, uh, uh, was upset uh, when Jesus kept asking him three times, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Peter, do you love me? Uh, Peter is going to preach now. Uh, which leads me to this uh, in Romans 10, 14 and 15. How, can, how then shall they call on him in whom they have not believed? And how shall they believe in him whom they have not heard? <coughs> and how shall they hear without a preacher? How shall they preach except they be sent? As it is written, how beautiful are the feet of them that preach the gospel of peace and bring glad tidings of good things. Uh, Peter was definitely sent. Uh, uh, he, Peter was well tested. Uh, you know, he had Jesus to tell him, Peter, put that knife back in your pocket. We just need you to speak the word. Okay. Uh, so, uh, so Peter, standing up with the, uh, with the 11, he lifted his voice and said unto them, ye men of Judea and all that dwell at Jerusalem, be this known unto you and hearken to my words. For these uh, men are not drunken, as you think. Uh, sing, it is only the third hour, about nine o'clock in the morning. Uh, Peter begins his sermon by, exp by explaining that while some thought those who were speaking in different tongues were drunk, they were indeed sober. Their speech was a result of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit was upon them. Uh, Uh, <clears throat> in verse 16 it says, but this is that which was spoken by the prophet Joel. Uh, and, and we have to remember that the prophets had, had a, they had a very uh, hard and tedious job because they had to deliver God's message to some hard-headed people. 
you know, and we're sometimes hard-headed, you know, uh, and, and so they had to repeat the same message over and over. Uh, you know, when, when Mama said, don't let me tell you again, you know, I told you three times, you know. I guess that's why on the fourth time you always got that beating. <laughs> three times was enough, okay. Uh, uh, but here, to make a long story short, uh, Peter begins to, to address uh, the people, uh, and he, he's reminding them what Joel said, that basically the world's going to come to an end, okay? Uh, but the good news is that Jesus is going to come again, and, and those that are uh, living right and, and, and living by God's word, uh, they'll be able to be with Jesus. Uh, and so that, to, to make a long story short, Verse 21, it said, And it shall come to pass that whosoever shall call on the name of the Lord shall be saved. Uh, and what Joel had prophesied uh, had been coming to pass for a long while. You know, Jeremiah, the, the weeping uh, prophet, he, he, he delivered basically the same message, you know. Uh, and Jeremiah just had a heart for the people, and, and he just didn't have the heart to, to keep telling people, you know, you're going down the wrong way. God wants you to go this, go to the right, you keep going to the left. You know, uh, God wants you to go on the straight path, you keep taking the crooked path. Uh, and that, you know, and, and we go through that sometimes. That those who have been re, uh, supervisors or managers on our job sometimes, when, when it comes to giving bad news, you know, uh, it, it, it becomes a hard task. And this is what the prophets had to go through, you know. Uh, uh, when I was working, and I used to tell people, you know, I've, I've never fired anybody. You, know, you fire yourself. So I figured when that time came where I had to give somebody bad news, like I told you in the beginning, you know, all you had to do was listen. Okay, so, uh, and, uh, so Peter was once again announcing the coming of the last days, the end of time, and also the return of Christ. Uh, verse 22, ye men of Israel, hear these words. Jesus of Nazareth, a man approved of God among you by miracles and wonders and signs, which God did by him in the midst of you, as ye yourselves also know. Uh, him being delivered by the determinate counsel and foreknowledge of God, ye have taken and by wicked hands have crucified and slain, whom God have raised up uh, having loosed the pains of death because it was not possible that he should be holding of it. So you, you people that are standing before me, some of you all uh, chose to, to have Jesus crucified on the cross. Even though uh, he, he showed you signs that he was sent by his father. Uh, so, you know, it, you all were part of the problem. You weren't part of the solution. Okay? Now, the, so, so the, after Peter delivered that message, the Jews demanded, uh, uh, <clears throat> uh, the Jews wanted to know, well, uh, how can we rectify this? You know, what, what can we do to rectify this? Uh, uh, and Peter continued to tell him, you know, uh, you, look, God raised him up again from the grave. Uh, I'm reminded of some pastor, pastor said, uh, I, I heard him say a couple of times, death told the grave to hold him, but the grave couldn't hold him. They had, the grave had to let him go, you know. Uh, no one had to move that stone, you know. Uh, he, did, he didn't need to, uh, it, uh, them to move the stone. Uh, he was God, uh, so he ascended to heaven uh, to be with his father. So now when they heard this, uh, uh, they were pricked in their heart and said to Peter and to the rest of the apostle, men and brethren, what shall we do? Uh, then Peter in uh, verse 38 said, uh, upon them, repent and be baptized every one of you in the name of Jesus Christ for the remission of sins. Uh, 
uh, and ye shall receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, and for the promise is unto you and to your children and to all that are far off, even as many as the Lord our God shall call. So what shall we do? Repent. Uh, now, repentance is a complete change of your behavior. Uh, uh, and then, and, and in, in addition to repent, you have to confess your sins. And then Peter goes on to say you have to be baptized. You have to be baptized in the name, <clears throat> in the name of Jesus Christ and be cleansed of your sins so that uh, you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Now, being baptized, as, as we know from our, our baptism lessons, that means we're submerged in the water, completely submerged. And hopefully when we go down in that water, all the dirt just flips, drops off you. And you come up and you still got that dirt on you. You got some more work to do. Now, uh, so, uh, you get baptized in the name of Jesus Christ, uh, and, and you, you can receive the gift of the Holy Ghost. Uh, now the promise will not only be delivered to the Jews as it was promised in the Old Testament, but to as many as the Lord calls, and as many as he accepts them. You don't have to be, be just a Jew now. You know. He, he wants all people. After all, didn't, didn't God create all the men on earth? So he wants all his people. We are all his people. Uh, in conclusion, uh, the Holy Spirit has arrived and has come with full power. Uh, the Holy Spirit is with us now. Uh, and there is power in the gospel. And whenever it's delivered in spirit and truth, uh, it, it is well received. Uh, not, not everyone that, that we deliver that word to it's going to respond to it. Our job, you know, God will decide, you know, uh, if that person was right or wrong. Our job is still to go out and deliver that word in spirit and truth. Uh, and, and I know many times, you know, there, there are people that we, we encounter that, that uh, we might be a little hesitant to talk to, you know. But just uh, think about what uh, God told Jeremiah. Jeremiah. Uh, became a prophet at a very young age, and he told God that, you know, uh, I, I can't speak. God said, all you gotta do is just let me put the word, I'll put the words in your mouth. Your job is just to give that word that I give you. And that's all we, we can do. Uh, we can do no more, we can do no less. Uh, so God will do the same for you and I. So let's continue to do our part and spread the gospel. Uh, wow, uh, that was a helicopter ride. I got 10 minutes left. <laughs> but I, it, it, had, it just had so many scriptures in this, in this uh, lesson that I wanted to make sure that uh, you got something out of it, you know. Uh, and I could have slowed down and saved me a little breath. But it, it, it's all good. Uh, uh, next week's lesson uh, is titled uh, Jumping for Joy. Uh, that's taken out of the book of Acts, chapter, will be in chapter 3, verses 1 through 11. Woo! Kind Heavenly Father, I thank you right now, Father, for allowing me to stand before the class this morning, Father. Uh, it is my prayer that uh, uh, the lesson delivered something to someone, Father, that will help them to understand uh, how much you love us, and, and how much you care for us, Father. Father, we ask you to continue to bless us as we go out through our morning service this morning, Father, and that those who have heard the word this morning, Father, that we just don't stop at Sunday school, Father, that uh, we, we carry that word with us as we uh, listen to our morning message, and that we go out during the week, Father, and help someone, give somebody uh, a word from you, Father. Uh, we know that uh, if we can't find the right words to say, you, you will put those words in our mouth, Father. So just let us continue to worship, worship you in spirit and truth. Uh, bless all that are 
here this day. Uh, all these blessings I ask in the name of your loving son, Jesus Christ. Amen. 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 Can we give God a hand clap of praise? It's so good to be in the house of the Lord one more time. I realize that the word declares that the song declares that he didn't have to let us live. But I am so glad that he did. Glad to be in the service one more time. Amen. Amen. I'm glad to see so many of our visitors and guests with us. And I'm so glad to see so many who are here. Our officers are coming to their place. We thank God for you. And certainly we are just grateful to God for all that he is doing in our midst this morning. Uh, we thank God that our Sunday school teacher uh, has moved us just a little bit ahead of schedule. Amen. Amen. We thank God for such an excellent lesson uh, that lets you know you don't have to be long to be strong. Amen. Uh, you can teach that lesson and, and move forward in the right way. And we thank God. We thank God for it. Amen. Now, if you have not given your Sunday school offering, uh, then we want you to see one of our ushers and uh, give as the Lord has prospered you on today. Amen. Amen. Uh, Sunday school is worth getting up for. Amen. Amen. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Thank the Lord. Now, we want to certainly uh, move into the midst of our service. I'm going to lead us in prayer. Following that, we'll have our uh, time with our praise team and our musicians. They're going to lead us in worship. And then we're going to have our responsive reading. I'm going to ask Deacon Cynthia Ray if she would prepare herself to share in our responsive reading this morning. That's after the praise uh, team, uh, Selection 581. Amen. And then following that, we'll be led to the throne of grace by the chairman of our deacon ministry. Deacon Robert Henry. Amen. Amen. Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Most holy, all wise, eternal God, our Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to be in your presence. Kind Father, we thank you for how you have brought us to this present moment in worship. We thank you, God, because you have kept us. We thank you because you never left us. We thank you that even as we enter into this place today, into this household of faith, oh God, that uh, persons have labored in prayer and persons have been here preparing the way, oh God. And we thank you, Father, that most importantly, we brought you here with us, oh God. We thank you that we are, we are entering into your gates with thanksgiving and into your courts with praise. We are hopeful to be thankful unto you and bless your name. For it is you that has made us and not we ourselves. We are the sheep of your pasture, oh God. And oh God, we thank you for what you have done. God, we look among us and we thank you for those who have uh, been sick and still now back with us. Oh God, we thank you for Sister Cheryl Winters, oh God, who has gone through surgery. And God, but you brought her back, God. We thank you for seeing Brother Tucson Prince, oh God, and so many others, oh Father, who have been out, but now you have brought them back. God, we ask that you would continue to keep us in your care, God. There are so many on our online campus, so many who are sitting before us, who are standing in the need of prayer. Somebody saying, it's me, it's me, it's me, oh Lord. Not the preacher, not the deacon, not my mother, not my father, not my sister, not my brother, but it's me, it's me, it's me, it's me. I'm standing in the need of prayer. Father, right now in the name of Jesus, we pray that you would touch, that you would heal, that you would deliver, that you would set free, that you would have your way. As only you can, God. We pray that your anointing would flow, God, in this sanctuary, in this service, from the back door to the end of the choir stand, oh God, that you would have your way, God. We lift up the musicians, the choir, all that are on the service, God. You have your way, Father God. We lift up those that shall pray, those that shall read, those that shall lift, those that shall serve, those that shall do whatever needs to be done. We lift up the preach word to you, oh God. Have your way, have your way, have your way. Have your way, God. Have your way in this place. Have your way, God. Have your way in this place. We're yours, Lord. Everything we are and everything we are not, 
try us now and see if we can be completely yours oh God somebody is struggling with a situation they don't know which way to go they've been crying all week long they crying all night long God but you have your way in this place oh God speak to our situations oh God somebody's body is racked with pain oh God but you have your way oh God you heal you touch you deliver whatever you need to do God have your way have your way have your way we're yours Lord we're yours Lord we're here now God we don't we're not gonna rest you you have your way God you have your way oh God you have your way right now God let your spirit move from heart to heart and from breast to breast, breast, oh God. We realize that there is a song that reminds us there's a sweet, sweet spirit in this place. And I know that it is the presence of the Lord. Sweet Holy Spirit, sweet heavenly dove, stay right here with us, filling us with your love. And for these blessings, we lift our hearts with praise. Without a doubt, we'll know that we have been with thee. When we shall leave this place, have your way. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Good morning. Hallelujah. Praise God, saints. This morning we'll be coming to you singing old familiar hymns of the church. So we're going to start out first with Standing on the Promises, Selection 279 in your hymnals. Please join in with us. Amen.
amen again. Thank you, Lord. Yes. We'll be coming to you now singing, some glad morning, we will fly away. It is for sure, one glad morning, we shall fly away. Selection 432. is over. I'll fly away to a home on God's celestial shore. I'll fly away when I die. Hallelujah! 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 H
That's why Deacon Terman can sing when you hear my home going. Don't worry about me. When you hear my home going. Don't worry about me. Thank you, Jesus. I'm just another soldier. I'm just another soldier. Another true born. Holy Ghost filled. Fire baptized. Just another soldier. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, God. Hallelujah. 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 Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah, church. Praise the Lord. This is the day that the Lord has made. We should be glad and rejoice in it. I will be reading the Lord's Supper, found on page 581 in your maroon hymnal. 1 Corinthians 11, 23 through 34. For I have received of the Lord that which also I delivered unto you, that the Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he break it and said, Take, eat, this is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. After the same manner also, he took the cup when he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my body. Wherefore, whosoever shall eat this bread and drink this cup of the Lord unworthily shall be guilty of the body and blood of the Lord. But let a man examine himself, and so let him eat of that bread and drink of that cup. For he that eateth and drinketh unworthily eateth and drinketh damnation to himself, not discerning the Lord's body. For this cause, many are weak and sickly among you, and many sleep. For if we would judge ourselves, we should not be judged. But when we are judged, we are captain of the Lord, that we should not be condemned with the world. Wherefore, my brethren, when ye come together to eat, tarry one for another. And if any man hunger, let him eat at home that ye come not together into condemnation, and the rest will I set in order when I come. Amen. Need a prayer. Yes. It's me. Yes, 
Yes, sir. It's me. Yes. It's me, oh Lord. Oh, yeah. Standing in the need yeah. of prayer. Yeah. Most gracious, all wise, all knowing Heavenly Father. Yes. Father of our Lord and Savior Jesus the Christ. Yes. It is once again right now we come to say thank you, dear thank God. You. We just come to say thank you for another day. Yes. Lord, we come to say thank you for another prayer, dear God. Yes. We thank you for the shelter that you provide. Yes. But most of all, dear God, right now we just so thank you, dear Lord, that you put it on our hearts and minds yes. to come to this branch of Zion one more time. Your will, Lord, not ours. Lord, and right now I pray for this waiting congregation, dear God. We come this morning, dear God, to say thank you again. Lord, if we had 10,000 tongues, we still would fall short, dear God. For last night, dear God, you watched over us as we slumbered and slept. No hurt, harm, or danger came about, dear God, and we say thank you again. But right early this morning, Lord, early, you woke us up, dear God, in time. In time, dear God, right now we yes. pray for that man, yes. woman, boy, or girl, yes. who know nothing at all about you, yes. nothing at all about your resurrection, nothing at all that you died yes. for their sins. Yes. yes, Jesus, you paid it all. Yes. But right now, Lord, I pray for the preacher of the hour, dear God. I pray that you build them up, Lord, as only you can. Yes. For dear God, we need a fresh word. We need a fresh word this morning, Lord, so that we can what? Yes. Walk in your way. Thank you, Lord. Lord, we thank you for your grace. You. Even though we don't deserve it, Lord, we thank you for your grace. But most of all, dear God, we just thank you for mercy. Mercy suits our case, Lord. But right now, dear God, I pray for those that are on their beds of affliction, dear God. Yes. Yes. You know each and every one, dear God. Oh, yeah. And you know what they're standing in need of. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. But if it be your will, yes. and your will only, Lord, touch them, oh, yeah. heal them, and deliver them. Yeah. Yes. But also pray for those that are bereaved, dear God. Oh, yeah. yes. Yes, Lord. We don't take death very well, dear God. It hurts us. It pains us. Jesus. Yes. But most of all, dear God, it's something that we all must cross that bridge at some time. Yes. Right. We all must face there. Yes. <clears throat> yes, Lord. Well, Lord, give us a clean heart. Yes. Give us a clean mind. Yes. Forgive us, Lord, if only you can. Yes. Yes. Lord, I pray for those gentlemen and men and women of, on Capitol Hill, dear God. Yes. We pray for each and every one, dear God. For in your word it says, lean not to your own understanding. And Lord, we've been confused by a whole lot of lean not to our own understanding. You are the way, you are the truth, and you are the light. No man can come except by who? Through Christ Jesus, our Lord and our Savior. So forgive us, Lord. Keep us as only you can. Yes. All these blessings we ask in our son Jesus' name. Yes. Our soul says, Amen. 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 Blessed assurance, Jesus is mine. Oh,
blessed assurance. Jesus is mine. Oh, what a foretaste of glory divine. We thank God for our praise team and our music ministry reminding us in so many different messages this morning of the goodness of our Lord and yes. our Savior. Amen. We want to, at this time, have our morning announcements by our church clerk, our assistant church clerk, uh, Sister Patricia Dabney, will come and share our announcements at this time. Good morning, church. Are you tired of wandering through life without purpose? Are you off course for the purpose of God on your life? <coughs> Time to walk with God in a new way. If you miss Thursday's Bible study, you can uh, see it on Facebook or there's a link on your purity alert. You just tap on it and you can see it again. 2023 elderly property tax credit applications on the purity alert is an application for residents of PG County who are 65 years or older for a property tax credit. Pastor Toogood will be the revivalist at the Macedonia Baptist Church Spring Revival Wednesday, May the 10th at 7 p.m. Services are in person or can be accessed via Zoom. And the Zoom information is on the Purity Alert or you can come to the office and get it. There's a health and wellness and end of life planning symposium and expo that will take place on Saturday, May 20th from 10 to 3 p.m. in Clinton, Maryland. For more information, the flyer is on your Purity Alert. The Virtuous Women's Ministry will host an Afternoon of Elegance, High Tea, Saturday, May the 20th, 12 noon. Donation is $20. You are invited to wear your fanciest hats, gloves, and pearls. If you don't wish to wear those things, come and join us anyway for an afternoon of fun, food, tea, and fellowship. See Deaconess Michelle Costin, Deaconess Barbara Jackson, or Sister Sheridan Talley Johnson after the service to make your donations. The Deaconess Ministry is sponsoring a shoe drive. Help us to help others by donating your gently used or new shoes. Shoes may be dropped off on Monday, Wednesday, and Thursday from 10 a.m. to 2 p.m. here at the Purity Baptist Church. The Women's Auxiliary of the National Capital Baptist Convention of Washington, D.C. and vicinity presents Women in White in-person worship service on Saturday, June the 13th at 10 a.m. Further information is on the flyer on the Purity Alert. We welcome back to the service, to our services, Brother Toussaint Prince. Amen. And Sister Cheryl Winters. Amen. Amen. Apostle Haru Carter will be having a surgical procedure on Tuesday, May 9th to implant a pacemaker. Please keep Reverend Carter and Pastor Celestine Carter and the Carter family in your prayers. The father of Deaconess Kimberly Emerson, Mr. Moses, is hospitalized at the Washington Hospital Center in stable condition. Please keep the Moses and Emerson families lifted in prayer. Uh, according to Kimberly, Amen. he's home. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Let's keep Brother Kenneth Tucker and the Tucker family and Trustee Bernadette Wilson and the Wilson family in prayer. Our known sick and shut in, Deacon Rupin Banks, Deaconess Angeline Bethea, Sister Barbara Douglas, 
Brother Jesse Harrison, Sister Fanny Nimmons, Deaconess Nailene Vale, and Deaconess Elizabeth Sims. Please keep all of our sick and shut-in, homebound, hospitalized, and bereaved members lifted in prayer. May you have a blessed day and a, oh, one more thing, I'm sorry. <laughs> Thank you. I am very grateful because you were very thoughtful. To Purity Baptist Church officers, members, and friends, we the family of the late Thomas D. Tibbs wish to thank you for your condolences. The family appreciates your prayers and support during difficult times. May God continue to bless you, each and every one of you. The family of the late Thomas Tibbs and Deaconess uh, Darlene Warner Jones. Amen. 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 <clears throat> May you have a blessed day and a blessed week. Amen. I don't have it. Oh, I'm sorry. The men's choir will rehearse immediately following this service in the choir room. Amen. Amen. Okay. Amen. Amen. Thank you. morning announcements. We certainly thank God for uh, the opportunity that we have to share in all of those things that have gone on. We're certainly praying for all of our bereaved families and certainly praying for all of those who are grieving uh, at this time. We're certainly uh, thinking about you and praying for you. For those who are sick, uh, whether you're sick at home, recuperating, or in some facility, we're certainly praying for you as well. All of our uh, homebound persons, we are certainly praying mightily for them. We're grateful to God for what he has done to bring us to this point. But we realize even with that, there are still those among us who languish with something uh, that they're dealing with. And so we lift them in prayer. And we know that God will hear us when we pray. We want yes, to yes, uh, yes, certainly yes, uh, yes. be mindful of uh, all the, that will take place uh, as we uh, go forward through the week. We do know that on Wednesday, uh, we'll share in revival at the Macedonia Baptist Church in Bryan's Road, Maryland. Uh, the online credentials are in your email. I certainly look forward to seeing you online. Uh, those who would like to come in person, you're certainly welcome to do so. Uh, but I understand the distance and the time of the service, so I know that there will be many who will uh, opt to join us online, and we certainly appreciate you uh, doing that. Uh, we want to uh, be able to share in revival and then come back home. Amen. Amen. And uh, do what the Lord would have for us to do. We have had uh, quite a busy week last week and a busy week ahead of us, but we're trusting God that he will get us all through it. Amen. Uh, Amen. And bring us through more than a conqueror. Uh, we do want to announce and remind you that our seniors fellowship uh, will happen this month for May. The month of May will be on May 18, Thursday, May 18. Uh, we will meet at 11 o'clock in the um, Urban Center Fellowship Hall. And so we're looking forward to you joining with us on Thursday, May 18 at 11 o'clock. We'll have a special presentation on uh, from uh, partners that um, work in the banking industry, actually one of our members, and uh, we want to hear a little bit about fraud and that kind of thing, per uh, how persons take advantage of your, um, your person, your uh, personal records and that kind of thing. We want to uh, talk through that. Now, oftentimes, tell me what it is. When you say that, they just hang up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, if you call it me to tell me somebody has my account, you ought to be able to tell me the account number. Huh? I mean, you dial my number to tell me something. You, you ought to already have it. Tell it to me. Read it off. <laughs> Go. <laughs> and, uh, and all of a sudden you hit a dial tone. You hear a click. Yeah, 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 so that you already know 
uh, what's going on there. Emails come. Click here. So I'm the IRS and I got you. Uh, no, uh, the IRS wanted to get in contact with me. They do a little better than this. They send it to me another way. And uh, so uh, it's important that we uh, be mindful and be wise. Uh, persons, we are giving up our information too freely, right. too easily, right. uh, without any, you know, without any pullback, and, and we can't, we can't do that. It's, it, 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 it puts us in a place where we are not to be. So we want to hear uh, a little more about that and be instructed in that, and we're going to do that. Uh, we want to, at this time, uh, prepare our hearts and minds for giving, uh, and we certainly want to uh, be mindful that giving is essential. And uh, we know that uh, a part of our giving of ourselves first, because that's what the scripture says, give up yourselves first. Uh, but a part of our giving of ourselves first means also giving of our time, our talent, and our finance, our tithe. We want to uh, give uh, at this point of our finance, and we certainly uh, will know that the easiest way to give is when we allow the ushers to pass through the uh, sanctuary with the trays, uh, but if you want to give electronically, you can do so by texting the message PBCUC to the digits 73256, PBCUC to 73256, and when we've done that, uh, you will be able to give as the Lord has uh, prospered you. A, a link will come up, you'll click that link, a menu will come up, you'll choose what you want to give to and you'll go forward in that way. If you have any questions or problems giving, give us a call at 202-397-4333 and we'll aid you in giving. Amen? Let us look to the Lord in prayer. Most holy, all wise, eternal God, our Father, we thank you for the privilege that we have to be in your presence. Kind Father, we honor you for the presence, for your presence in this place. We pray that as we give, our hearts will be cheerful and that what is given would be used for the upbuilding of your kingdom and the furtherance of the ministries of Purity Baptist Church. In Jesus' name we do pray. Amen. Amen.
certainly mindful of all of those who are sharing with us today. We're grateful for those who are joining us, uh, virtually those who are sitting in our sanctuary. We're just glad that you're here with us on this first Sunday in May. Amen? Amen. We're able to celebrate communion one more time. And we thank God for, for that. Amen? Amen. We want to, uh, at this point, prepare our hearts and minds for our choir and our mind ministry to come. Amen. And so if we, uh, hopefully Alex is out there at the door, is Deacon Mota there? Amen. We want to get them uh, available to come. We want to um, uh, say to each and every one of you, our uh, mind ministry, uh, praise dancers as well, um, and you know they're one in the same uh, in terms of persons. Uh, they have, over the last few weeks, uh, been making themselves available to whatever services and whatever places we are extending ourselves to go. And um, several of our most recent um, engagements that they went with us, uh, when they got there, they realized that the appropriate speakers or the ability to be able to play what they were going to minister to uh, was not available. At one point, you know, somebody just put a microphone to the thing, and of course, as their hand moves, so does the microphone. So you can hear the music, and then you can't. You can hear it, and then you can't. And um, that's just not the way we do things. It's not how we present ourselves here at Purity. And so uh, my ministry um, has made a request, and we'd like to honor that request. Uh, so that they can go forward with their work. Uh, they have the desire. I, 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 somebody asked them to bring a, a CD. Player, you were top of the line. You, I mean, you were, on, you were cutting edge. <coughs> I, and you try to buy a car now, you, you can't find, you, they don't sell cars with CD, not now. Not a new, not if it's 2023, 20, you're not going to be able to get a CD player in there. Um, they have so many different ways that you can connect now. You can just put your phone in the car and the car just knows that's your phone. I mean, you don't have to click no buttons or this, it's just when you just get in the car, and turn it on, the car says, connect into your phone. How do you know I want you to connect to my phone? <laughs> Every time you try to connect it over, it connects, the car has taken over. young people want to be able to have the right speaker, the right kind of information, uh, the connection and the connectivity. And that, 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 that's going to run us about $1,400, $1,400 for them to have all the stuff that they need so that when they go out, uh, they can get it. And I, I, I really think we can, we can do that uh, without any, any sweat. I think we can do that. And so... Uh, at the end of the service, there may be somebody online that just wants to send it right away. They just want to text to give, and, and they want to do it right away. Maybe somebody in here that wants to do it right away, uh, and, and, and that's fine. Uh, my ministry, I think Praise Dance Ministry is on the uh, thing. Sharon will give me an update as to which selection it is. Uh, we'll choose, and uh, we'll, we'll go trusty Garner, and we'll go with it. But we want to be able to do that at the end of service as we're leaving. At every door, there will be receptacles. And uh, if you have something in your heart that you want to give above and beyond, uh, the stand up. I want our praise dancers to stand up. Stand up, praise dancers, and let us see you. Stand up, stand up. Can we give God praise for them? Come, come, come out in the aisles. Come out in the aisles so they can see. Leave some space. 
I'll give you this little spec. Look at them, look at them. They, they, they are ready, they are ready. Look at them, look at them, they are ready. And, uh, and we don't want them, these are our young people, this is our future. These are, these are the people that will be the next chairperson of the board and the That's chairperson right. of the That's deaconess right. ministry, right. missionaries and ushers and nurses and, yeah. and whatever new ministries they dream up because there'll be new ministries. Uh, there'll be yeah. new ministries that I'll be so glad to retire because I don't know how to deal with them. So, I, so they'll, be able to, they'll be able to go forward with it. Amen. And, uh, and, and uh, Alex and those, they'll take over and go on with it. But uh, we, want to, uh, we want to support them. Amen? Now, $1,400, we can do it. We can do that today. We'll, we'll move forward and we'll have, we'll make sure that we tally it and keep an update so that we know what direction we're going in. Amen? Amen. At this time, we want to hear from our My Ministry and Praise Dancers and then following that, we hear from our choir and then the preached word. Amen? Amen. Now, now somebody online, if you, if you hear what I'm saying and, and, and you know you got it, you, 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 you coming on and you coming on, we thank God for you coming on. But, but now we need you to, to do a little something for us. You can, you can text it. You don't have to, you don't, you, or you can call the church. Call the church, 202-397-4333. Somebody answer the phone. And uh, we'll, 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 we'll make sure you get it in. Amen? Amen. 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 We love you too. Uh, they're letting me know they love Sister Nelson. We love you too. Amen. We thank God for you. I just want to share my testimony because nothing else matters to me it's not about me but Lord it's all about you before I ever say one word Lord consecrate me Before I ever sing a song, Lord, clean my heart. You have my permission to do whatever you need to do. Because I don't want them to hear me. I want them to hear Yesterday 
the blood of the Lamb. There is power, power, wonder-working power in the precious blood of the Lamb. Oh, there is power, power, wonder-working power in the blood of the Lamb. In the precious Oh, well, yes, the power, power. Power, power, wonder working power in the blood, in the precious blood of the Lamb. Amen. We thank God for the two messages that we have just received. Our mind ministry praise dancer shared with us is not about me, but more about him. I think that that message resonated deeply with us as we shared in in fellowship and song and thank God for our praise team that has led us so bountifully in worship today and we give God praise for our musicians amen we are grateful to God for them our videographers, amen, we thank God for them. Sound ministry, we are so grateful for them. And to our ushers who are in uniform and on the door, to our nurses who are in uniform and in service, to all of our officers and leaders, it is certainly with a joy that we greet you in the name of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ and say unto you, it's indeed mighty nice to be on the Lord's side. When I see the usher standing in the aisle with their uh, the white uniforms on, it reminds me of the painstaking process that my grandmother used to take to keep that dress <laughs> with no wrinkles in it. And uh, Deaconess Melton would start early in the week so that when she got here on Sunday, there would be not one wrinkle the material that those uh, dresses are made out of. It's not easy to keep them wrinkle free. <laughs> and so I just know the sacrifice that is taken uh, to appear the way that you appear today. And we praise God for you. On the spur of the moment, actually, someone called me and asked me if I would do it. Uh, and I said, well, how do you know I can do it? And it makes you think. Anyway. Um, it's always good to be home, amen. And you know, St. John chapter 8. St. John chapter 8. Amen. Amen. 
we're going to certainly keep Deacon Whitehead lifted in prayer. Uh, she hasn't told us directly, uh, and I understand because she's private, much like I am. We do a lot of the same things. We watch the end of a show so we can see what it's going to end like, and then we go back and watch it. I do that same thing. Read the end of a book and then go back, because I don't like surprises and all that kind of stuff. And um, she'll be having surgery this week if all goes well. Is that right? Hmm? Wednesday. And uh, on her knee. And we're going to pray that the Lord would have his way. Doctors and nurses would do what they're supposed to do. And she'll come out more than conquering. The doctor told her eight to 12 weeks of recovery. She has claimed four to eight. <laughs> her max is where they started their minimal. <laughs> We're trusting God for it, our acting superintendent in her absence. Uh, and she'll only be absent physically because she'll still be on Bible study on Tuesday. But uh, her, the acting superintendent will be Deacon Melvin Watson. Amen. And we praise God for that. I'm going to say this now because I, I, don't, uh, I know how we can be sometime. And, uh, I know we're good Christians, but sometimes we can be nasty. Huh? Now, 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 I, now, we realize that Reverend Kay is not in his role. I don't mean to point you out, Rev, but I'm doing it because somebody else is going to say something, and isn't it? And uh, he came from work. He works in the own son. He got a house to take care of. He got a household to feed. And he has to work, and so he's often not here for that. And today he came in here right from work, right from wherever he was coming from. He came, and, 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 and we're just glad he's here. And we're not going to worry about what he got on. And so ain't no point of you going back there, oh, Rev, I know. Oh, hello, stranger, I know. All that old foolishness. <laughs> Some of you laughing because you're the one that's going to say it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Sometimes I hurt dog a holler, won't it? And uh, so, 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 so don't even start it. Don't even start it. Don't even start it. John chapter 8. And we're going to start with verse 1. Jesus went unto the Mount of Olives. Early in the morning he came again into the temple. And all the people came unto him, and he sat down and taught them. The scribes and the Pharisees brought unto him a woman taken in adultery. And when they had set her in, her in the midst, they said unto him, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. Now Moses in the law commanded us that such should be stoned. But what sayest thou? This they said, tempting him. As though he heard them not. So when they continued asking him, he lifted up himself and said unto them, He that is without sin among you, let him cast a stone Cast, let him first cast a stone at her. Again, he stooped down and wrote down on the ground. And, when, and they which heard it, being convicted by their own conscience, went out one by one, beginning at the eldest, even unto the last. And Jesus was left alone, the woman standing in the midst. When Jesus had lifted up himself and saw none but the woman. He said unto her, Woman, where are those thine accusers? Hath no man condemned thee? She said, No man, Lord. And Jesus said unto her, Neither do I condemn thee. Go and sin no more. Verse 7, that be clause, He that is without sin, among you, let him first cast a stone at her. I'd like for you to think with me for a little while on the subject. Don't even try it. 
don't even try it. You may be seated in the presence of the Lord. Let us pray. Most holy, all wise, eternal God, our Father, we thank you for the opportunity that we have to be in your presence. Kind Father, we need to hear from you. We need a word from you. If we don't hear from you, what will we do? Discretion is now with you. Let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in thy sight. O oh Lord, you are my strength and my redeemer. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. God bless you, ushers. We want to study ourselves this morning in the gospel according to St. John. John had to the gospel record. Whereas other gospel writers were concerned about genealogy and about history and tracing name by name, almost an ancestry.com sort of feel. John said that the lineage that I'm trying to trace is far more eternal than any name can give us. And so whereas others gave names, John said in the beginning was the word. <laughs> and the word was with God. And the word was God. In essence, John said, I'm going to cut to the chase. I'm not going to go through all of these names because in the end, these names you won't remember. They won't help you. You don't know them anyway. But what you need to know is that the God of our salvation was there in the beginning and will be there at least until your end. He came out of eternity, came into time to return you to eternity. John, in many ways, predict, presents his gospel in such a way that there are those who, when they read it, began to see that more sensitive side of our Savior. He was God and man they see the more humanistic side of him. They see his emotions. John allows Jesus to emote. In the Gospels, you find Jesus in places where he is at a high point, and he is happy with all that is going on. Places where he is angry and he walks into the temple and turns over the table and calls them a brood of vipers. And though we don't know exactly what that might have been interpreted to, I'm certain that vipers is nothing that you want to become. Here Jesus is in a place in our text this morning where he handles the situation that is presented to him in a wise and contemplative way. That we have to learn and be careful to use wisdom in all that we do. Many of us are in situations and find ourselves in difficult places, all because we don't allow the wisdom of God to flow through us. Somebody said, Reverend, how do you get wisdom? Well, the scripture says, if any man lacks wisdom, let him ask God. And God will give him wisdom. So, so, so you don't have to search for wisdom. God will give you wisdom. 
And so here Jesus is at the Mount of Olives, and he is in the temple, and he's teaching, and he's carrying on the worship experience. Can you imagine on this first Sunday, here we are in our uniforms and attired and ready. The communion table is dressed and prepared, and all that is happening is going on. And in walks a group. dragging someone down the aisle forcibly and sits in the middle of us someone and they make an accusation about that person. Now, I know that wouldn't happen at Puritan. Number one, I've got A1 ushers, so they wouldn't even get beyond that door. That's the first thing. But, but just imagine. Jesus was in the worship experience teaching. And here comes the scribes and the Pharisees, those who were enemies to the cross, those who were always trying to trip him up. And they put this woman, they say, that was taken in adultery. And they set her in the midst of the worship experience. And to be even further disruptive, they say, Master, this woman was taken in adultery in the very act. I don't plan to labor here long, and I'm just going to skip through this text a little bit, but the fact that they bring up that she was caught in the very act. Now, we've got some children here, and you keep looking at me, and I'm going to look at you. But, but if you caught her in the very act, then what you realize was she won't die. Oh, it takes two. Lord have mercy. Last time. No, never mind. It takes two to tango. And if you caught her in the very act, the question then comes, why? How did you get? What were you doing? You ever had somebody want to Pull out your stuff. I mean, yeah, I saw such and such at the liquor store in the club. And, and, but, 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 but then my question is, I mean, I mean if, this, if this was such a bad thing, why, where, how did you see them? What were you doing there? If it's such a bad problem, I mean, if everything is just so terrible, if this is such a hard, why were you there? Chatty Kathy. <laughs> You're running around telling everybody else's business. And but I wonder, Lord have mercy, if the light was shined on you, what would be found? Well, sometimes. We are so busy pulling the speck out of somebody else's eye that we don't realize there's a beam. <laughs> In fact, that's the reason why you can't get to their speck because your beam is keeping them far away. We as the church have a hard time with this process. Brother Prince, we spend so much time pointing out the, the, the idiosyncrasies and the sins of others that we almost destine ourselves to die in our own sins. Because rather than doing as the scripture admonishes us by working out our own soul salvation, we're busy minding everybody else's soul salvation. And Jesus, with his wisdom, <laughs> and, and I'm glad to read this text because it'll give me some idea uh, in case something like this ever happened. It's because the first thing we want to do is we want to respond back. 
But you got to learn that every fight that you're invited to, you don't have to attend. Just because somebody give you the invitation, you don't have to go to the party. <laughs> Just because you invite me to dance at your party, it don't mean that I have to show up. There are many invitations that, that I don't take and, 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 and I don't feel bad by not taking them. Because there's sometimes that you need to spend time with the Lord anyhow. And sometimes your, your taking up this invitation will cause you to fall outside of what God would have for you. It's not always easy. Because sometimes you know just the words to say. In fact, you practiced them. How you were going to look when you said it and how you wasn't going to blink and you was going to stand down. So they are no. <laughs> stand toe to toe with them. And here comes wisdom that says, this is not something you need to respond to. They were trying to tempt him. And can I tell you, there are still folk out here trying to tempt somebody. Tempters still live. They say little things. They throw little things. They do little things just to try to see what you're going to do. You say you're a believer. You say you're a Christian. You say you're this. You say you're that. They want to know if it's real. And really, that's not your place. You're not Holy Spirit Junior. You don't have any reason to be trying to figure out my salvation. And if you really understood salvation, you'd understand that there is grace to cover even when I am not all that God wants me to be. Even when I respond when I shouldn't respond and do when I shouldn't do, I still have the good. If you understood salvation, you'd understand that one Friday, oh, it's too soon now. You'd understand that he died for my sins. To remove the guilt. And so Jesus didn't respond. Instead, he stooped down. Didn't say a word. He just started writing in the ground. The scripture says, as though he heard them not. Here they are at the height of their emotional experience. They've worked themselves up, worked their nerves up, gotten themselves all upset. We got him this time. We're going to get him this time. He ain't going to be able to say nothing. And you're right. How he going to talk his way out of this? He's not. <laughs> he stooped down. And started doodling in the sand. Have you ever doodled? It can calm you down when you are at your height. I don't believe in the text, and I don't believe you believe it either. I don't believe that Jesus wasn't touched by what was going on. But this doodling helped to keep him focused. Because had he responded in the way that he could have, with all power in his hand, here you are disrupting my teaching to bring one person, because it's going to take two at least. Now there could have been more there, but, but two at least. For there to be adultery. Right. 
Everything, I, everything I'm thinking right now don't have nothing to do with the purpose I came here for. Every, every thought I'm having don't have, yeah, 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 yeah. And, 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 and sometimes we find ourselves in those kind of situations where our thoughts are stretched to the limit and challenged and we've got to learn when to hold them. Learn when to fold them. Learn when to walk away. And learn when to run. Sometimes you got to realize that just because you invited me, I don't have to get involved in this. And then once he got to a good place and he could say something spiritual, And among you, <laughs> let him first cast a stone at her. In essence, don't even try it. If you are standing here and you have no sin, then pick up a rock and throw it. Many of us stand in pulpits Sunday after Sunday and we point out specific groups of sinners that ain't our sin, so we can talk about it because it ain't our sin. We, we point out whoremongers because we ain't, supposedly ain't doing that, and we point out alcoholics or whatever you want to call it because those who uh, drink too much because we feel like that's not our thing, and, and now we've got this whole Thing. But, but the stuff that we do, we, we don't talk about the lottery. So you might not have been in the liquor store buying a bottle of liquor. <laughs> huh? But they sell lottery tickets. Lord have mercy. That's how you saw the, oh, okay. <laughs> never mind, never mind, never mind, never mind. Yeah, we, we, we have a, we have a, 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 a sort of proclivity to talk about the stuff that we don't deal with. Not realizing that the wages of sin, no distinction, is still death. I may point out what I can see in you, but what about that jealousy that's inside that can't be seen? What about that gluttony that's inside that, that don't always show up on the outside? What about that envious spirit? What about that proud and haughty spirit that can't be seen on the outside, but is still there? I'm talking about you at the liquor store, but yet I got envy in my heart. I got greed down in my soul. I'm eating, I'm gluttonous, I'm doing, I mean, I mean we got to realize. Jesus made them think. He led them to a self-reflection. And as they reflected, the scripture indicates that every one of them hung their head and walked away. From the oldest to the youngest. Lest we think Jesus didn't deal with the lady's sin. I'm going to pull this piece out and then I'm going to go back. He did tell her, go and sin no more. So it wasn't like he was excusing what happened. But he realized that his place was to forgive. And far too often, we have made the church a place of judgment rather than a place of forgiveness. 
And we sit and we recount everybody else's stuff. We don't want you to forget what you've done. Yeah, I know what you did. I look at it. She thinks she's doing something. I know. I don't even see how, how they got on the board. I don't see how they got on there. The pastor must not know what they did. I know, and, and, and maybe it was there too. Huh? Yo, y'all, it got quiet in here now. There ain't nobody talking. Eh? <laughs> it's some stuff we done done since we've been saved. I mean, since you had the Holy Ghost, since you spoke in tongues, since you cried, since you laid out, since you prayed, since they laid all on you, since you rolled in. The, it's some stuff you done done post salvation. That's why I, I don't want no screen up here. They keep saying they want to put a screen. I don't want no screen up here because I don't want the Lord to use that screen and roll my... No, 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 no. no, no, no that's okay. We don't need no screen. Because <laughs> he just might one Sunday decide he want to roll my life and I don't want him to roll nothing in here. <laughs> nope, no screen. Let it be that sign celebrating over 75 years of worship that's what because, because because all of us we sitting here today and our wife looking good looking holy looking saved and when we get out of here some of us planning some stuff in our phone right now they texting you right now. Is he finished yet? How much longer? What time you gonna get out of here? Great God in Zion. You gotta put your phone on. Do not disturb because they texting you so much. Keep going off. Beeping and carrying on. Everybody looking around. You trying to act like it's not you. Let me rush on, let me rush on, let me rush on, let me rush on, let me rush on. But, 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 but when Jesus said it, he stooped down again, they walked out. And Jesus said to a woman, where are thine accusers? Where are all the folk that thought they was big and bad enough to, to, to talk about you and to, to lay out your stuff? He taught our lesson in that and taught us all a lesson. None of us have the authority to stand in judgment over any of us. I don't care what you know, what you saw, what you can prove, what you got the records for, what you can see, what you screenshot, what you got receipts for. I don't care. None of us. Have the authority to stand. By the grace of God, that we are still here. If it had not been for his grace and his mercy, we would have been cut off a long time ago. But simply because of his grace and only because of his mercy, he looked beyond your fault and, and he saw your need. But not only did he see your need, but he saw some purpose in you. He saw some usability in you. He saw that he could use you for the kingdom. He realized that though you had gone as far as you could go, that now you had learned some things. And now you knew some things. And now you could stand up and be grateful. And that's why I don't stop anybody from their praise. Because you never know what somebody has had to go through to get the praise that they got. Somebody said they dance every Sunday. They cry every 
every Sunday. They roll every Sunday. They lifting their hands every Sunday. They talking about preach, pastor, preach every Sunday. But you don't know the hell that they had to go through. You don't know the hill they had to climb. You don't know the sin they had to overcome. You don't know what God brought them out of. You don't know what God brought them through. And every time they think about it, when they think about where they could have been, when they think about what should have happened, they should have lost their mind. They should have got caught up in some mess. They should be in jail right now. But only by the grace of God are they still here today. And all they can do, they can't say a word, but all they can say is thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Lord. Lord, for doing what you do. I'm so glad that Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, but Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad. my sins away he forgave me and cleaned me up what you can't forget God has already washed away what you trying to remind me of God has already said it is finished Somebody said, Reverend, 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 oh, Reverend, how do you know it's finished? When did it wash your sins away? Where did it happen? Can I take you back over 2,000 years ago to a place called Calvary? They took my Lord and your Savior. They put nails in his hand, nails in his feet, a crown of thorns on his head. And can I tell you what he did? Um, he died. Um, he died. He died. Oh, yeah. He died for the remission of every one of my sins. They put him in a bar or two. He stayed there all night Friday. He stayed there all day Saturday. But just before the breaking of day, while the dew was still on the road, early, 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 on Sunday morning, he got up with all power, power to make you walk right, power to make you talk right, power to make you pray right. Can you help me go to my seat now? If you believe he's got power, can you say yeah? If you believe he's got power, will you say yeah? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Ain't he all right? Won't he make a way? Say yeah,
Yeah, come on, let's give God some praise. Hallelujah. Come on, let's not stop praising him. Hallelujah. Isn't he all right, church? Isn't he all right, church? Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Did our pastor not preach this morning? As he usually do, but did he do something extra this morning? Let's give a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Glory be to God. Hallelujah. The doors of the church are now open. Why don't you stand all over the building if you can? Oh, Jesus. Thank you, Pastor, for that sermon. Thank you. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. The doors of the church are now open. Is there one for the Lord this morning? We offer Christ to you, our brother. We offer Christ to you, our sister. We offer Christ to you. It is free. It is free indeed. Hallelujah. Jesus paid the price on Calvary over 2,000 years ago. Amen. Hallelujah. People may not forgive you for your sins, but God will forgive you. Pastor, preach heals without sin. Let him what? Cast that first stone. Hallelujah. Some of you better duck. Amen. Hallelujah. The doors of the church are now open. We offer Christ to you. Is there one for the Lord this morning? We offer Christ to you on our Facebook campus. We offer Christ to you on conference call. Hallelujah. And in the sanctuary. Is there one for the Lord this morning? There are three reasons why you need Jesus. Because you have a past. Amen. How many of you have a past? Hallelujah. How many of you are still passing? Amen. Hallelujah. And because you need a friend, what a friend we have in Jesus. Hallelujah. And because he holds the future. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. Thank you, Lord. If you like to begin a personal relationship with Jesus today, but we, is there one in the sanctuary that would like to come down this morning? But if you would like to begin a personal relationship with Jesus today, please pray this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I invite you into my life. I believe you died for me and that your blood pays for my sins and provides me, hallelujah, with the gift of eternal life. By, re by faith, I receive that gift and acknowledge you as my Lord and Savior. Amen. Now what? Let someone know if you have done this during the service, Facebook or conference call, someone will receive your, um, the write-up, um, your, your text on Facebook and we will reach out to you. Amen. If you've done this this morning during the service, we ask that you will call, as I said, to discipleship and that we will help you. If you wouldn't do this at another time where you are not around other believers in Christ, please contact a mature Christian that you really can trust or give us a call at 202-397-4332. And we want you to enjoy this journey with us. As Pastor states every Sunday, that we are not a perfect church. And we are not a perfect people. But we're striving. Amen? Now let's give God a hand clap of praise. <laughs> Hallelujah. You may be seated at this time. Bless the name of the Lord. We thank God for his word. We thank him for prayer. We thank him for all that has happened today. We thank him for all that he is doing in our midst. 
God is working on our behalf. Amen. And we want to prepare our hearts and minds at this time. Uh, since there is no, I don't believe there's any right hand of fellowship today. Am I right, Mrs. Freeman? No right hand of fellowship? Then uh, that means we're preparing our minds for our communion worship at this time. We want all of those who will share in that to get themselves in the sanctuary and officers to put themselves in place as we prepare ourselves for communion worship. We are always grateful to God for the opportunity to celebrate communion. I'm grateful for the level of intentionality that goes into the work. Those who prepare the table, those who serve it, those who make sure that it is put away that all things are done properly. Even I who pronounce it, there is intentionality in every step. Christ died with intentionality. He rose again with intentionality. So it's important that we show our expression of gratitude for all that he's done through our intentionality. It comes now, Reverend Geneva Logan, to lead us in our church mission statement and our um, community work. Do we have the, we're going to give the ushers an opportunity to give us uh, our yellow documents. Amen. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. When I was in trouble, Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, Jesus lifted me. Satan had me bound, Jesus lifted me, singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me, I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah, Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. I'm so glad Jesus lifted me. Singing glory, hallelujah. Jesus lifted me. Amen. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. Bless the name of the Lord. Amen. 
we thank God. I believe we have our documents now. We've gotten spoiled. Amen. Amen. Bless the Lord. Thank you, Christian Ed Ministry. Thank you, Deaconess Ray. We are so grateful you're spoiling us now. We're spoiled now. We, if we don't see that little yellow sheet before us, we don't think we're ready. Amen. 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 Let me get mine. Won't you please stand at this time? Does everyone have their document? Amen. Okay, we're going to begin with the church mission statement and then to our church. Here, Clint. Our church mission statement, then our church covenant. Let us begin. The purpose of Purity Baptist Church shall be the proclamation of the gospel of Jesus Christ as the inspired word of God, the spread of the gospel throughout the world, the administration of the ordinances of the New Testament, and the spiritual growth of all its members. Amen. Let us begin with our church covenant. Having been led, as we believe, by the Spirit of God to receive the Lord Jesus Christ as our Savior and on the profession of our faith, having been baptized in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit, we do now in the presence of God, angels in this assembly, most solemnly and joyfully enter into covenant with one another as one body in Christ. We engage, therefore, by the aid of the Holy Spirit to walk together in Christian love, to strive for the advancement of this church in knowledge and holiness, to give it a place in our affections, prayers, and services above every organization of human origin, to sustain its worship, ordinances, discipline and doctrine to contribute cheerfully and regularly as God has prospered us towards its expenses for the support of a faithful and evangelical ministry among us, the relief of the poor and the spread of the gospel throughout the world. In case of difference of opinion in the church, we will strive to avoid a contentious spirit and if we cannot unanimously agree, we will cheerfully recognize the right of the majority to govern. We also engage to maintain family and secret devotion, to study diligently the word of God, to religiously educate our children, to seek the salvation of our kindred and acquaintance, to walk circumspectly in the world, to be kind and just to those in our employ and faithful in the service we promise others, endeavoring in the purity of heart and good will towards all men to exemplify and commend our holy faith. We further engage to watch over, to pray for, to exhort and stir up each other unto every good word and work to guard each other's reputation, not needlessly exposing the infirmities of others, to participate in each other's joys, and with tender sympathy, bear one another's burdens and sorrows, to cultivate Christian courtesy, to be slow to give or take offense, but always ready for reconciliation, being mindful of the rules of the Savior in the 18th chapter of Matthew, to secure it without delay and through life amid evil report and good report, to seek to live to the glory of God, who have called us out of darkness into his marvelous light. When we remove from this place, we engage as soon as possible to unite with some other church where we can carry out the spirit of this covenant and the principles of God's word. Amen. Amen. 
I remember these little yellow documents. I see you passing them. That's good. Because they belong. If they, if they go in your purse, that's the wrong place for them. Amen? You pass them down to the end of the row and let the ushers receive them. And, and that way we'll have them for the next time. Amen? Amen. Amen. That's why they're laminated. Amen? So that they'll be ready for the next time. Amen. And they're taking up some now and they'll get some more later. Amen. Amen. Ushers, that's okay. If they don't have them now, don't worry about it. You come back later and get them. Amen. Amen. Bless the name of the Lord. We want to be sure that we do not take these home. Amen. Amen. They belong to, you see on the bottom of this thing, Christian Education Ministry. I'm going to ask uh, Deaconess Ray, we're going to print out some labels with the church name on them and stick them on the back. Huh? Yeah. That way, if it's in your purse, that means you know where to mail it. Thank you, Jesus. Hallelujah. Now, now, now we are certainly grateful to God for the opportunity to come to this communion service. We know that this that communion is a prepared meal for prepared people. Persons, first and foremost, that have been prepared by faith in God and secondly have been prepared uh, through worship of his name. We realize that as we share in communion, who's the other? Uh-huh. 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 Amen. We realize, it will come along. We, we realize that as we share in this communion worship, we know that God is truly blessing us for the work that we are doing and uh, that we use this time to uh, be mindful of it in our going. We know that we come to this work with a scripture that understands that all have seen and that if there's anyone among us that could cast a stone, or that thinks they could, I don't even want you to be near me because I don't want, if the lightning strike, I don't want it. <laughs> I don't want it to get me. All of us is, yeah, have a reason why we could not, should not, would not participate. But we all have a greater reason as to why we do it. By the grace of the Lord, <laughs> I'm still here. And so, as we move our hearts quickly to this work, our deacons come. And they move our table to a more prominent place, reminding us that Jesus must be made Lord of our lives. Salvation is so simple. He says, confess with your mouth and believe in your heart that Jesus Christ is the Lord. That he died and was raised from the dead. It's so simple. But we've got to do it. This moving of the table reminds us that it takes our effort. It takes our confessing. It takes our believing to make it work. Our lights go down. And our candelabras become a glow. Depicting for us that Jesus is the light of the world, a city that is set upon a hill cannot be hid. Our deaconess come. They remove the cloth in that most sacred way, reminding us that it was with intention that Christ died, with intention that he was buried, and with intention that he rose again for the remission of every one of our sins.
you saw it, didn't you? Okay, you got it. <laughs> All right. Bless the name of the Lord. I come to the table. a mother and daughter duo. Amen? Amen. Amen. We thank God. Amen. It's all right to give God praise. Amen. I said at uh, Deaconess Prince's funeral that leadership in this church is in that family. It's in that blood. And Deaconess ministry is specifically in their blood. And uh, we thank God for that. As we come to the table, we notice several things, but centermost, primary to our attention is the cross. However, there is no Christ on the cross. For Christ has become, he's come down from the cross and he has become the first fruit to all of them who believe. We notice trays that are present. And in those trays are two elements. One is the bread, which represents the given body of our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. And the second is the fruit of the vine, which represents his blood, which was shed on Calvary's cross for the remission of our sins. I do note that when you receive your element, remember that these are our new elements. And so before you open the juice, because they're on each side, they're up and down, open the bread first. Take that, and then after we have taken the bread, then you can open the juice. If you do it the other way, and you got on your white, I'm just unsure of the words. I don't want to hear the kind of language. <laughs> I, mean, I know Peter had a... <laughs> yeah, yeah, and I don't want us to go all the way back to Peter and pick up some words that we don't need. In the same night in which Jesus was betrayed, he called his disciples unto himself. And so it is that we call the diaconate ministry of Purity Baptist Church to aid us in this communion worship. Our Righteousness, the scripture declares, is but filthy rags in the sight of our God. But I'm so grateful that we serve a God that is able to change what is before us from a natural to a spiritual use. And I'm going to ask Reverend Rollins if she would come and pray to that end. Amen. So there's so many times when we come to you, we're asking for things. We want things. But today we come, Lord, to honor you, to worship you. We come to elevate you for all that you have done for us. We realize, Lord, that you gave your life. You suffered, bled, and died for us that we could have right relationship with the Father. Your Father, our Father, we are so grateful. So we lift up these elements to you and this service to you, Lord, majestically. We lift to you. We honor so many things, but today we just honor you, the Lord Jesus Christ. We lift these elements. We ask you to change them from the commercial use to the spiritual use for the edification of our bodies and our minds. 
that we might internalize even as we take it and that it might renew in us and restore in us the fact that we are standing in awe before an awesome God and we just come to give you glory. We give you honor. We give you praise. You are the majestic one. And we know they're not going to crown you till we all get there. But we do honor you. We do elevate you. We do exalt you. We pray your blessings on our pastor, our church, and all of those who partake of these elements. We ask your blessings in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen.
The Lord Jesus, the same night in which he was betrayed, took bread. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is broken for you. This do in remembrance of me. Eat ye all of it. Amen. After the same manner also he took the cup. When he had supped, saying, This cup is the New Testament in my blood. This do ye as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. For as often as you eat this bread and drink this cup, you do show the Lord's death until he come. Let us drink ye all of it. Additives in there. So. Huh? Y'all yeah, standing there trying to look dignified, but it, you felt something when you drank it. <laughs> Thank you, Jesus. Thank God you can still feel something, huh? Thank you, Jesus. I think I'm, I'm still feeling something. Hallelujah. And my taste buds still work. Thank you, Jesus. Amen. We know the disciples sang a hymn. And they went out to the Mount of Olives. We don't have a Mount of Olives to go to. But we do have a dying and perishing world that needs to know. Don't even try it. He that without sin, let him cast the first stone. Wherever you go, whatever you do, praise God. Give God your heart and, give, and he will give you the victory. He is a victory-giving God. He'll fight your battle. But you must learn to keep still. God be with you. Please be reminded that we want to make sure our young people have what they need in terms of the speakers for their thing. And so we've got trays at every door. Make sure you don't leave without giving them a little something. Amen. And if you're not going to put it in there, then just text to give. It's all right. Amen. 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 And amen. But we want them at all doors. At all doors. We want them at all doors. Remember, we're trying to get $1,400. I think we can do it today. We may already have it. Somebody might already text it again, but that's all right. Just give anyhow. And, uh, and we know the Lord will bless you. Amen. Amen. God be with you. Amen. Amen.